Hey, welcome to Harness Your Intuitive Superpowers, where you learn energy secrets that busy professionals need in order to thrive beyond mediocrity and embody extraordinary success and abundance. I'm your host, Dr. Amir Hall. Today, I'm so excited to bring you my special guest, Daniel Scranton. Daniel is a spiritual teacher, and he's a verbal channel and sound healer. Since 2010, Daniel has been channeling this 12th dimensional non-physical collective beings that are known as the creators. And since that time, a wide array of spiritual messengers have spoken through him. And some of those include Yeshua, Archangel Michael, the Council of Seven, and the Arcturian Council. He has the ability to channel the light languages that provide healing overtones has helped heal himself and heal thousands of people around the world. I'm so excited to share with you this conversation. I think you're going to be blown away. Daniel and I get into the conversation about relationships and how we can use our intuition to better steer and make decisions in our relationships. So I think you're going to love this interview. Let's go ahead and welcome Daniel. So welcome. I'm so glad to have you here, Daniel. Oh, it's such an honor. I'm so happy that we connected. Daniel, how does an American guy fall into Australia and his channeling expertise? How did that happen for you? I started channeling like you just read from my bio in 2010. So by 2016, I had gained a certain momentum with it and online presence and so on. And I was pretty active on Facebook with all my channeling work, putting it out there and so on. My wife, who had also emigrated here from the Philippines via Papua New Guinea, and so she was born in the Philippines, but now is an Australian citizen. She was not a big Facebook person, but she was new to seeing herself as a channeler, a healer, a guide, a coach to other people. And so when Facebook made oh, got, these- Got some company here. I know. And the other one just came out of the closet. She <laughs> they hide do, in the closet all day. Don't they do and that so all the time? And so they're both coming out. Yeah. When we were, when we were they, talking they, about raising the vibration. Yeah. 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 This one likes to get into my videos <laughs> for oh, sure. Awesome. Welcome. What's her, her name? Ali Hunter. Ali named after a fairy that my friend channels. Wonderful. Sorry <laughs> to interrupt. Alejandra is okay. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, see, that's all so, she wanted. Well, welcome. Yeah, yeah, she just wanted some acknowledgement. <laughs> so my wife is not a big Facebooker or social media person to this day, but some friend of hers or coach of hers encouraged her and said, you got to get out there more. You got to put your stuff out there. You got to be on social media. So she's on there putting out her videos and stuff. And Facebook as suggests friends to you. And for some reason, she thought it would be a good idea to delete some of those suggestions that Facebook was making for her to add as a friend. And when she saw mine, even though we had no mutual friends at all, she clicked on it and she looked at my timeline on Facebook and said, oh, this is actually somebody I have things in common with. So let me add him as a friend. And when she made the request, I looked at her and said, wait, is this some sort of fake account, some kind of bot that's just spam? And I had to investigate her and I looked at her timeline and I said, she's doing the same thing I'm doing. And she's saying it in the same way that I say it with like very little differentiation between the language, the words and everything that I would use to say, or my channeling or me speaking as me too would say about these things. So I became very interested in her right away. Plus, she's gorgeous. And that always and helps, so I, doesn't it? I, yeah, that got my attention right away. Yeah. So I said, yes, I'll be your friend. And I thought about reaching out to her. But then I thought, she's in Australia. I don't want to get in another long-term relationship, which became my third. Not long-term, <laughs> long-distance relationship. Oh, yeah, that's heavy and hard. Yeah. It can be. Yeah, it's so hard. And... um. And so I was looking very specifically on Maui or another Hawaiian island for a mate. And so I didn't do anything. But then she reached out to me. And so 
her she was following her intuition because her intuition was telling her friend this guy reach out to this guy and then when i very enthusiastically responded and said hey i noticed you're doing this and this i have a little bit more experience maybe i can help you let's have a conversation about what you're doing right now she followed her intuition again and said yes and then even though i was thinking i don't want long distance yeah i don't want to have kids it was obvious just by looking at her with her niece, all the pictures of her with her niece. I'm like, oh, this is a type of person who wants a kid. And she's younger than me too. So she was definitely in those childbearing years when we met. And she, we started talking like right away, like messaging. You know how when you're getting to know someone, sometimes there's that, am I messaging too much? Or how long do I have to wait? Or why am I not hearing back from them? There was none of it ever with her and I. It was like, constant back and forth. We'd Skype, we'd talk on WhatsApp and we'd message. And then I finally said to her, look, you need to come to Hawaii and visit. I have a spare room here where I'm staying. You can stay there. It'll be safe for you and everything. And people over here in Australia were telling her, are you nuts? Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to fly. He's, I bought her the ticket too. You're just going to accept this invitation to go visit this man you barely know. It, and she couldn't deny the feeling. And I couldn't deny the feeling either. I was much more into it right away than she was. And I was, and at some point I told her, I'm like, I, I just have to tell you, I love you because I feel oh, it. My. And so she came and we hit it off obviously and wound up getting married and all that stuff. But it was at a certain point I said, oh, so you want to have a kid someday, right? She's like, yeah. And I was like, ooh, a deal breaker. But I couldn't stop. And now, of course, I have a daughter who's four, who oh. I realized, okay, so your life really isn't complete until you have this part of it now that you have. And, and it's been hard in all the ways that I knew it would be hard to, have, to parent, but it's still worth it. It's worth it for the moment you see her smiling and running and playing on a playground. Yeah, because she was, what, one when COVID hit? And you guys she was had, not even one. Yeah. And down there in Australia, we, we weren't here at the time. Oh, we were out COVID on Maui where it was so easy to do. Oh, yeah. Because what we ever did anyway was go to the forest, go to the beach and go to the grocery store. Oh, that's, and that, that's we All I had to do is throw a mask on at the grocery store and I would just go in by myself. And that was it. That was a change, big change in our life. Oh, Start that's to- very cool. This is a very interesting twist that we took here in Turk about yeah. relationships. And I think that I know that over the years and consulting with people, one of the biggest questions was, when is Mr. Wonderful going to come? And what do oh, we yeah. do to, to trust ourselves? I know that people have trusted relationships and they've been bitten. Do you have anything or over the years, has your channeled messages given any guidance in terms of relationships? Trusting a little, a little. relationships are really what it's all about. If you're watching a movie or a television series and it's interesting and the character's doing lots of things and you recognize you might be tuning in for that reason. But at the end of the day, you want to see how these characters relate to each other. And that's what makes it most interesting is like, how are they growing through that relationship? And it's true of our lives too, where our relationships are the perfect vehicles to get us to grow in all the ways. And my wife and I are still a work in progress in regards to that too. You know, it's not like we're always completing each other's sentences and everything's always simpatico. And so we, you just realize this is how I grow, that being a dad is now how I grow too. And that's another type of relationship. But certainly with romantic relationships, because I've been married before too, And my second wife, she and I were like that classic twin flame push pull. We'd break up, we'd get back together. And, but we helped each other so much. We helped each other overcome so many things and teach each other so many things. And she helped me to actually grow in what I was doing with my channeling in ways that I had no one else in my life at that time nudging me towards getting myself out there more and revamping my website and having more of a presence on YouTube and all that. So I needed her and she needed me for certain things. And we did love each other too, but it was tumultuous to say the least. 
And now looking back at it, in spite of all the pain and all the hurt and all the problems, you can't help but think, yeah, but I needed all of that. And I needed to clear out a lot of things. I needed to learn about people's, other people's emotions and how to work with other people's emotions and, and thoughts and beliefs. And it's really the best, most fertile soil that we have for our spiritual growth. And I think the Art Council and others that I channel acknowledge that. Yeah, I've always told my clients, we come together, we come in relationship to learn about ourselves. Sometimes a lot of people are looking at outside themselves. He's so handsome or he's so put together or he's so educated in terms of a woman for a man or vice versa. But it's not about them. It's about us and where we yeah. need to grow and where we need what we need to learn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, speaking of intuition and trusting it, I think I was always intuitive and I believe everybody is psychic or intuitive, just a matter of how accessible it is to them and how much they trust it. Would you say that's true for you, that you've always felt intuitive or did you feel like there was a turning point or... <laughs> time in your life where it got cranked on for you? Yeah, I woke up in my late 20s. And before that, I didn't know about intuition. I didn't know about anything. I didn't know about feelings. I didn't know about thoughts or (laughs) anything because I was raised Catholic and I went from being Catholic to being atheist to awakening spiritually. And then I realized, oh, all of this is important. And I remember for learning about synchronicities through the Celestine prophecy. And now it seems like those of us who are awake are like bombarded with synchronicities, with signs and symbols all the time. And the universe we recognize is talking to us. And as soon as you recognize, oh, that's not just a coincidence. That's when you can go, okay, This is something to really pay attention to now. And then what we also need to do to work with our intuition is to follow through with it. So when you get something, it's then important to follow through with it. But a lot of times we also learn by not following through and then taking that lesson through. Okay, I should have listened at that moment when I was at that fork in the road and I was getting this inkling to go right for some reason. I didn't listen. And then I went left and there was traffic jam and an accident and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's no. how you know. Just go but, right. You never know. Oh, that was intuition telling me that because you don't know um, unless somebody tells you there was an accident on the freeway. Yeah. Yeah. So often that I, for me now, it is just so natural to listen and hear the little voice. And people often ask me, how do you know that inner voice of intuition versus your, let's say, analytical self or your, yeah, your analyzer, intellect? How do you, how do you teach your clients? One of the best ways to do it is to just get quiet. If you don't have a practice of quieting your mind, then get one, develop one. And it can be while you're driving. It can be while you're doing the dishes. It can be while you're exercising, spending time in nature. Meditating, of course, would be the obvious one. But to be more present and mindful in the moment, that's when you're more likely to automatically receive a download. It's when we're trying to get it. We're trying. It's almost like we're trying to pull teeth from the universe and say, Give me the sign. Tell me what to do. And that's when you don't get it. Usually, usually yeah, most people the frust- do not have a lot of success in that way. But yeah. when they're relaxing or doing what they love to do or in the shower or the bathtub, that's when things drop in. And it usually is maybe something that goes against the intellect. So the intellect says, oh, no, this has to be the way it is. This is the way it's always been. This is the way I've always planned it to be. And then your feeling goes, but I really feel like this is the right way. And then you have to follow that, which is usually counter to what you think. You mentioned race Catholic. I was also. And so I had a lot of the programming. I think most of my family just dismissed my own. If I get a hunch or I'd say this is going to happen or that, they would invalidate me. And I feel like 
for a lot of people, when they think that they're not intuitive or they're not listening to that inner voice, it's probably been some patterns of not neglect, but I would say almost emotional or spiritual abuse, or maybe it's even a challenge, right? Because when these obstacles, call them our family or yeah. our environment, show up, they're a challenge for us to write either exercise it or, like many of us, just shut it down for a while. Yeah, it was awful being raised Catholic for me. It was terrible. I consider it almost like a trauma to have had that yeah. experience. I always I'm say I'm recovering. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. emotional pain to be taught about being judged by an angry God who might send you to hell. And that's real, that if you're paying attention to it now, I wound up in a Catholic high school too. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed was my friends at the time didn't pay any attention to what they were teaching us at school because we actually had to take classes on Catholicism yep. too. Bible class and all that stuff. Catechism. And, um, <laughs> catechism, yeah, I did, took that as a child. I noticed I, I seemed to be the only one in my group of friends who cared about any of this stuff and was tortured by it too. And, and then I went to Boston University and I was always interested in Greek and Roman myth. And when I started learning about how all these cultures have a flood myth and some of them even have a crucifixion story and it's, wait a second. So this is an only contained in one book, that's the book. It's like across all these other cultures and oral and written traditions. So then it started making me question things. Right. And that's what led to me eventually just giving up the faith altogether. I want to go circle back to this intuition and listening to that little inner voice, because at some point um, you started listening to that little voice calling yeah. you on a new, on a different path <laughs> and to shed the chains of Catholicism and, but they were your yeah. teacher up until a certain point. And maybe they were actually the instigator for you to be more curious. Obviously a very sensitive soul. Your friends didn't right. seem to be bothered, but you were. Right. Because you <laughs> probably your soul recognized the, the importance of it. Yeah. The reason I brought that up is because you mentioned how even that's a teacher, even being raised Catholic is a teacher. It still, it still informed me of something else. And mm -hmm. I, I think I had to go through that probably because of past life stuff and go through yes. it and abandon it and then get to that place. Now, intuition, following one's intuition usually feels good. So when I was atheist and I would think about the possibility that if I die and I'm just buried in the ground and then I end, that really didn't feel good. So I stopped thinking about it <laughs> at a certain point. I just wasn't even like going there. And then I woke up because of an interview I heard with Deepak Chopra, where he was talking about a lot of the other things I believed in because I got really into natural stuff. Like I was an M a raw fooder who eats all vegan and organic. And I was believer in the body's ability to heal itself rather than relying on pills and Western medicine and all that. And so he made a lot of sense to me. And then when I started hearing him talk about quantum physics and quantum mechanics and the quantum universe, I was like, there really is more going on here than Freud and Darwin think. And that's who I was into. Yeah. When coming back to the relationship and tying this intuition and all of this and feeling like Catholic bondage. I too was married and my ex didn't believe in anything, life after death. In fact, at the time, I couldn't even say the word astrology, never mind anything else. But I was starting to become very curious and my soul was like wanting more. I was hungry for any kind of thing that I could learn about numerology, meditation, on all the mystery schools. So that was the crux that broke the relationship for me because I felt like my soul was pulling me towards this intuitively, fully coming into who I was. And of course, that was way yeah. premature. I didn't know. But it took courage to leave that relationship. I look at it backwards now and looking at it and say, wow. But it's that intuition that I just knew it was a square peg in a round hole that we were trying to jam in. And I think so many people, and I was so dedicated to that, I didn't want that relationship to fail. 
I didn't want that stigma. Yeah. But I had to, at the mm. crux of it, listen to my intuition and forge forward. And it was that decision moving forward a lot of years has allowed me to grow into myself. And if I see a lot of people trying to force themselves into those relationships. Sometimes if it starts to meld and work like you in your second marriage, it worked for a time. You supported each other yeah. and helped. And yeah, yeah. It was an ebb and a flow until there wasn't any. Until there was nothing left. And right. It was <laughs> <laughs> Guys, yeah, Peter, we were done with each other. Yeah. Um, you learned she, the lessons, right? You learned all yeah. the lessons with each other. Yeah. But it's funny, I have another good intuition story in my first marriage, which broke up because of the same reason as yours, where I felt like we were just growing apart, growing apart. I was so into my spirituality. It's all I wanted to focus on and talk about. And she did. And like, she would even get upset if I would bring certain things up. So yeah. then I was like, well, what am I doing here? Yeah. And then when I finally said, hey, I don't think we're compatible anymore. And we wound up filing for divorce. I was torn inside by her pain and the, and just it's painful to break up with someone you've been with for seven and a half years. And but seeing her pain was it was so hard to even have the initial conversation. And of course, I questioned it like, am I doing the right thing here? I kept questioning it. And I asked the universe for a sign. And so I wanted to see five, five, five. And I'm driving home from this place I was, and all I saw was everything but 555, 444, 777. So I'm like, oh God, I didn't see it. And then the day we went to file, I think it was the next day, went to the wrong place first, went way out of our way. And then we were driving back to the right courthouse. And there it was. The number on the courthouse was 555 that wow. we needed to file. Wow. So I, okay. And then I knew that I was yeah, being guided yeah. right path for me. And it truly was. I started channeling maybe five months after yep. she and I split up right. is when I started. So there was a lot that needed to happen, obviously, in my life. And I feel like everything has played out. But a lot of times, too. So intuition comes to us from within. It comes to us in those signs and symbols and synchronicities. And it also comes to us through other people. Sometimes we have to take a sign that is three people telling us the same thing. You know, like I had happened for me a couple of times where it was like once the third person told me read conversations with God, that's when I did. And once a third person told me you should get Reiki attuned, that's when I did. And both of those were big turning points for me in my spiritual life, even though I'd already been awake for several years. Mm -hmm. Don't you just love these uh, conversations? When I had my awakening, I don't know. For me, I don't know that there was a one point because it seems like each dark yeah. night soul, there's like a, we're taking the staircase upwards to heaven. And I, I find it amusing anyway when folks say, oh, I had my awakening. Really? <laughs> hey, just hang on. Yeah, yeah. And let's say it was a... Uh, uh... A two-parter for me, because first I had to have that alignment in at university that said, you need to let go of this thing and then be atheist for a while. And then the second one being like, no, there's more to this than you think. There's more going on here. Yeah. And that's what convinced me to just keep going, just keep going down the path. And it, I went from Deepak to a bunch of others before finding conversations with God, finding the Seth books, which were... yeah groundbreaking, unbelievable that more people don't know about the Seth books because they're so amazing. And then that led me to Abraham and following Abraham and Esther around the world, uh -huh. Uh -huh. including to Australia once. Uh -huh. And that, that ultimately, I think, led to me channeling because I threw myself into the world so much. I was following that inner guidance that was telling me, this is what you want to be in. You want to be in this world. And so my mind could be telling me I'm going because you never know when the latest tidbit will come out from Abraham or you'll get to ask questions and take the conversation to the next level. But really, I think we're getting these attunements always when we're around channelers and channel material. It's one activation, one attunement after another until finally you're ready to break open 
and let in more of that energy that informs us of so much. Yeah, it's very cool. I think for some people, they might not know what channeling is. I know for <laughs> myself, for a very long time, I was curious about channelers. Was there, would there be a message that we could give our audience in terms of busy professionals? You mentioned meditation being key. Mindfulness is like one step before yeah. probably becoming more aware of your emotions and your energy and your thoughts and yeah. being more in that flow. And then meditation to quiet our mind. Would you say that's the key thing or what? The key thing about meditation really is focus. And a lot of I've learned from a couple of like really powerful teachers recently too, is that the problem most people have with meditation is they think that it's all about not thinking. And then when they think during meditation, they go, oh my God, I'm terrible at this. I can't do it. And abandon it. But in actuality, let's say you spent 15 minutes and you were in your head the whole time. Guess what? Now you're more aware of what's in your head. And that's that's what the Buddha talked about. The Buddha talked about awareness. So he was he wanted to be aware that he was aware. And that was his goal. And I think that's what we're after here too in meditation. It's about focus and it's about awareness. So you can focus on your breathing. You can focus on your heart. You can focus on a guided meditation. You can focus on your third eye. You can focus on all at the same time as well. But it's getting you to focus. It's getting you to tune in more to something that is internal rather than what now in today's world, there's so much out there that's external that we could be focused on. And so much that's trying to grab our attention too with clickbait type headlines every on everything now on newspapers on on everything there they want our attention but when our attention needs to go inward so when i teach channeling with people too one on one a lot of times in those channeling lessons i'm basically working out with the person negotiating with the person okay let's see where we can find the time in your life for this because you really need to make that time for yourself to be able to do this because for most people it's a gradual opening up to that energy that's going to come in and flow through them trusting so, and being open and being feeling like yeah. they're going to be okay and not lose themselves yeah yeah that's part of it too that's a whole other part of the, but that yeah. just making time if you can make time before you get out of bed or while you're falling asleep or while you're showering, while you're bathing, while you're exercising, driving, all those things I was mentioning before to tune in more, just get out of your head a little bit and pay attention to your breathing, to your feelings. You can't, you can't change your vibration. You can't raise your vibration unless you know what your vibration is and where you're stuck or where that energy is living inside of you that's not vibrating as high as you'd like it to be. So that's why awareness is so important. So if you meditate and you just become aware of the fact that you're anxious, well, good. Like you need to know you're anxious because otherwise you're walking around holding that anxiety and creating your reality with anxiety. So and all your yeah. there's more anxiety no matter what you do. And that's what <laughs> creates living in a world of mediocrity. Yeah. And, and we just have to work harder. And then the whole cycle just builds up that tension and stops that flow, which is the way we come into that divine abundance and success. Yeah. When we are listening to that little inner voice and heart to the appropriate right action. Yeah. Yeah. I find that people just are really in their head and not in their heart. Would you? tend to agree with that? When people, when we talk about the shift in consciousness, and I have, I don't know if you can see them over my shoulder. I have some books called Ascension, the Shifting, the Shift to the Fifth Dimension. When we talk about that, that really is a big component of what we're shifting from. We're shifting from being more action and thought oriented to being more feeling oriented and heart centered and focusing on our vibration 
rather than how much we can do or how popular books that have been written in the past about how you can talk to certain people to get what you want out of them. So you, yeah. using your voice. NLP and, yeah, manipulating yeah. in a way. Yeah, it's the way we've been manipulating reality for so long has been more of that mental, egoic, and even lower masculine way. And now we're shifting into the more heart-centered, feelings-based, divine feminine way of working with energy and manifesting and getting to the point where we don't have to do as much. And our society, we owe a lot in our society today to all the work that's already been done to those who've done it. My wife and I were talking the other day, we're traveling through this long tunnel in Brisbane and we're like, imagine how much work went into building this tunnel and how much time and how many mathematical equations were involved in getting this thing to exist. We have so much to be grateful for in that we have all the homes, all the buildings, all the roads, all the bridges now built. And now we have also help in with our electronics and our gadgets to get us to get things done faster. So we can spend more time if we make that time tuning into our intuition to what our guides are saying, to what else we can possibly channel. And I do think getting an intuitive hit is channeling. I think a lot of things are channeling that we don't call channeling, but it's the same thing. You're downloading something. All of our thoughts are channeled because our brains are these radios and they're receiving. They're receiving based on whatever the dial is tuned to, just like a radio does but our dial internally is our vibration. So we have to actually feel better first before we can actually think better. And some people go about it the other way and that's fine too. You wanna to think better. You wanna focus on things that feel better to you and change your vibration that way. That also works. But just becoming aware of what's being felt or not felt in here and working with the breath to modulate that, to release what is not serving us and amplify what is. That's how we go about changing that radio station in our brain. You know, I was thinking about you channeling the creators and it made me think, you know what? We are all creators. Yeah. And what is it that we're creating based on our vibration and our thoughts yeah. and our feelings are part of that vibration that sends a ripple into the world. And so by getting quiet and getting focused and doing the meditation, as you pointed out, and being mindful of those thoughts, then we can get closer to being in that flow and being in that creative abundance. Yeah. yeah it was, is, uh, I'm not familiar with the name creators. There's a story behind that. They started coming through me and they did not give me a name. They said, you have to pick the name. Okay. Because what we don't realize is we have a nice, convenient name for Archangel Michael, and that's great. But that's one being, or what I would call collective of beings, really, that is up there in the non physical helping. We don't have names for most of them. They don't have names for themselves. They don't need names. You and I are not going to need names once we ascend right. because. I'll know you by your vibration, even if you're that day operating as a mermaid or something, right. you've shape shifted your body into some yeah. orb of light or something. I'll be like, oh, there's a mirror playing as an orb because I'll be able to feel that that's your vibrational signature. That's your unique aspect of source that you are that vibrates. And so they know each other that way in the 12th dimension. They don't need names, but I had to come up with a name for them. And at first I took lazy approach of just giving them a name that somebody else had called them that I was channeling for a lot. Then I finally sat down and did automatic writing and got the name, the creators. And then I got one of those confirmations from the universe yeah. that was so obvious that it was the right name to choose. But uh, yeah, we are all creators. And of course there is a prime creator too, Yes, but there are also creators that create universes that are more specifically oriented in creating galaxies and planets and all of that. So 
It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can relate to you and what you wanted, what you were saying about recognizing the soul. I was just working with a client today, one-on-one, -on -one, and in this work, we go out of the body into the threshold between lifetimes and take a look at the past life, and we also look at this life. What was interesting is he said, I see that my parents are there. And he said, I can't see their faces, but I recognize their vibration. And yeah. he's, it was just a frequency. And he knew that those souls chose to have, you know, him as a son. And it yeah. was fascinating because when we're out of our linear thinking, we can get this information. And it truly is taking me down a rabbit hole with you. <laughs> we could talk for all night. <laughs> Oh, I love that life between life stuff. I've read Michael Newton's books and I'm a big studier of near-death experiences too, because there's a lot to learn from those people and what they bring back. So I'm, I've heard that type of story before and it's, yeah, it's well, definitely true. That realm is one where there we're all communicating telepathically and we just know things and we just know each other and it's not as concrete as it is here. And I think too, as our vibration is elevating, the people we meet, we might just meet a stranger, but within hours, you're so close in terms of knowing each other. And you have so many matching, what I call matching pictures or experiences that you become fast friends. And I always yeah. say, as we elevate our consciousness and our frequency grows and our spiritual awareness grows, friends fall away. Right. And so then yeah. there's other people that fill in that gap and they're quicker and they get us and they can mm. accept us. And it's just so much easier as we continue our path. Yeah, yeah, it really is interesting. And yet those people that fall away are still part of our soul group and we'll, we'll encounter them later. They'll play a, yeah. a huge role again in our lives if they yeah. ever have. Yeah, at any, exactly. Yeah. Good to know. I, like I said, I could talk to you for ages and maybe we have spoken for ages in terms of lifetimes. It's so great, <laughs> But I would like to leave our audience with if there's any special last minute thoughts that you have to share or a message for us or any commentary about creating abundance and success and in our intuition. Oh, God, I'm also not only am I a channeler, but I also work for myself. So I'm a business person because I have to be because the bills have to get paid and I, I run this as a business and I've run other businesses prior to this one too. And so I understand now what brings me the most revenue in my business is the new idea. It's a new idea that comes to me that then I act upon and then I see the result where all I'm doing sometimes is taking something and promoting it differently or repackaging it or packaging a bunch of stuff together and making it into a course. And I, those ideas that, that do come that result in so much more abundance, they do come, like I said before, when you're not trying so much, you're not trying to think of the next great idea, but you're just living your life. You're just paying attention. And we learn a lot from other people too. And what other people are doing and what's working for them, that then becomes how we are informed of what's possible and something that we could do that inspires us. So I would say, look all the time, pay attention both inwardly and outwardly because you are getting those messages in some way, shape or form of how to grow in terms of if you have a business or how much abundance you're allowing to flow into your life. It's always those signs and synchronicities are always there, but we just have to be willing to see them and notice the significance of them enough to act upon them. And having courage to act. Yeah. Just do it like Nike. And that will get louder too, is the thing like w with intuition. If you're not following it and you're not following it, you're not following it. Well, the voice somehow will get louder and everybody wants a voice in their head because everyone wants to just be told what to do. And this is the right move and that's the right move. And but that's not the best way for us to grow is to have 
to constantly be told what to do. But if we have to interpret more subtle hints and work more with vibration and energy, then we grow spiritually. But though even those things can get amplified in their intensity and you notice, okay, now I'm really, this is more than just a gentle nudge at this point. <laughs> Yeah, things will crash and burn or like me when I I had a cosmic two by four hit me. Yeah, that I actually <laughs> had a near death experience that got my attention. So. You did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, being in the corporate world and then and having to be forced to stop doing what I was doing to do the, my spiritual work. But that's why I'm so passionate about sharing with other professionals, you don't have to do it the way I did it. And yeah. listen, and trusting herself and nurturing that little inner, inner voice, there's amazing things that can result as that as a result. Right. Yeah. Daniel, before we close, where can people reach you? How can they find you? I'm on the internet, of course. DanielScranton.com is my website. There's tons of things on there, events, upcoming events, and all the little things in my store that I have, but I do an almost daily channeling with the Arcturians on YouTube. And my YouTube channel is also just called Daniel Scranton. So it would be youtube.com forward slash capital D and Daniel capital S and Scranton to get to the, the homepage of my YouTube and my Instagrams at Daniel Scranton channels. I'm on Facebook. So there's lots of different ways to find me, find the messages, sign up for the newsletter right. and get a free meditation if you want to all of that. And so we have a free gift for all of our listeners. And your free gift is? The Grounding Meditation by Archangel Michael that I channeled. That is so fantastic. You. I love it. You like it? <laughs> uh, grounding is my number one thing I teach people. Yeah. Yeah. I it's so love important. it. Yeah. You can't yeah. be aware if you're not in your body. You no, you can't. And you can't manifest. <laughs> That's the secret to manifestation, everybody. Yeah. Is to manifest, is, is we got to be present. Yeah. And there's science behind it too. I recently saw an interview on Next Level Soul, which is a great YouTube channel and podcast. And this sciencey guy talking about grounding and the science behind it and how it works, which I can't even remember, but I've always known it's important, but to hear it yeah. like, yeah, being explained. Well, so you can feel it. Angel Michael. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much for yeah. that. I am super excited to listen to it myself. Hey, Daniel, I just am so grateful for you sharing your time with me and all of your wisdom, all of your work. You really are an angel. And thank you. Thank you for being here for all of us. My pleasure.